Hi, my name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. My, uh, my wife Sally was recounting to me uh, a few months ago about the fact that when she was a young woman in her early 20s, she got connected with this Jewish family. I, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but the power and the impact that it had on her is something that it really hit home. When she would go into their home, she would see stark evidence of their Jewish lifestyle in, in their faith, in the rituals. Uh, she remember at Passover seeing the pots and pans covered over and the mirrors covered by uh, cloth and hidden away. And, and, and she just saw evidence of what it meant to be a Jewish person and have a Jewish lifestyle that was connected to their faith. It wasn't something they just did when they went to the synagogue. It was a way of life. And she was mentioning to me that, you know, as a young woman, uh, she, she had gone to church in South Africa. She brought up Anglican. But she, she didn't see much evidence of a, of a lifestyle or a way of life that came out of going to church. That was something you did Sunday mornings, and then you lived your other life, your, your real life, the rest of the, rest of the week. And, and she was wondering what, what, the, what was the Christian lifestyle. In fact, she never even got exposed to what she would call a, a Christian lifestyle until she got to Canada. And she started meeting people who, who really deeply ex, uh, practiced their faith. And, and, and over the last number of years, I think she's been slowly putting together what she understands to be a Christian lifestyle. It got me thinking, what is a Christian lifestyle? What would it look like? Uh, what, what would it feel like? What would be the practices that would undergird a, a Christian way of life? You know, Jesus said in the Gospel of John, he said, the person who loves, who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's the person who loves me. The person who knows and keeps my commandments. That's the person who loves me. And I'm thinking to myself, is that the evidence of a Christian lifestyle? The person who knows and keeps the commandments of Jesus. Maybe that's where we, as followers of Christ, look to pattern out our own lifestyle. And it's interesting in the Gospel of John that there is actually only one commandment that Jesus gives the disciples. It's called the New Commandment. If you can scour through the whole Gospel of John, you'll only find one commandment given to the disciples. And he says this, if the new commandment I give to you is that you love one another as I have loved you. This is how the world will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And, 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 and the whole practice or the whole lifestyle of a Christian is, is, is rooted in the practice of perfect love, agape. This love that we talked about last week, that it's on the one hand, a love committed to allowing people to experience natural consequences for their actions in life, but at the same time doesn't abandon them to the natural consequences, the commitment to perfect companionship. And that's the promise that Jesus calls us to in loving one another. And it's the blessing that he says God will give to us in the midst of living out this communion of love with one another, that the parakletos, the advocate of God, the Holy Spirit will come as a perfect companion to us forever. And we'll never have to, to move through life on our own. You know, when we fall down, the world will often criticize us. It will mock us. It will uh, judge us, condemn us, punish us, and certainly abandon us in those places. When, when we look up from falling down, we wonder who will uh, be there to help us get up again. And, and the promise of God in spirit is that there's this perfect companionship with us all the time. And that the hand of God is reaching up without any criticism, without any mocking or judgment, or condemnation, or punishment, and certainly without no abandonment, and lifting us back up on our feet again. And it's hard for people, people in the beginning of, of, of a faith life, or in, in the context of the world that teaches us to be sightless, to really trust that God is present with us. And so the question comes, well then, where do we experience this perfect companionship with God in our lives? And John answers this in a very simple way in one of his letters. He, he says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he, God, first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandments we have from him, Jesus, is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters. We will not see the hand of God extending out to us until we experience the hand of our brother and sister love extending to us. 
And in fact, there's a merger of the hands. The hand of God and our hands become one as we extend the kingdom of love to others. You want to know the practice or the lifestyle of a follower of Christ? It's very simple. It's the extending of hands, human hands, and divine.